Hey guys, just a quick talk before this video starts. I know um, that the reading this video isn't the best, but is it ever really the best? I am. I'm not a YouTuber. I mean, as a YouTuber, records so much stuff like for reading. You think it'd be like really good, but I'm not. And I realize now that mistakes are going to happen, and there's really nothing I can do about it. You know. Uh you know, I I want to be better at it, but the only, I think the only way I can get better at it is just continue reading stories. So. I don't know. I feel like I put too much effort in thinking about trying not to mess up, which is why I mess up. So, I don't know, maybe one day, um, or maybe one video, because I'm not saying a day, maybe one video I'll upload it and it will be perfect. But for now, uh, this is how it's going to be. So, I apologize in the head, but it's not really something I can stop. I mean, if I could stop it, I wouldn't let it happen. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Hope you guys enjoy, though. So a while back, I did a reading for a story, which was an Annie X Amumu story, and that got 500 views. I have, I don't even thank you guys for that. Um, I I think it's, it's like still amazing that I got as many views as I did for that video. Seeing how I just <clears throat> basically did nothing. I didn't do anything for that. I I didn't, I don't even deserve the amount of views I got for that. <laughs> so. I got, I get back, and I read another story, and this one is a little bit different, okay, this one is a little bit less known, but this is a ship, apparently, and we're going to be doing, and you guys probably guessed it already, that's right, Riven X Lux, let's do this, Guiding Light, Chapter 1. Done. Fallen early in the face of intent. In well, wow, words. Initiation to the League of Legends. Riven exited the reflection chamber, finding herself in the main hall of a gigantic institute. From the raised entrance, she had full view of the expensive. All right, the end expense of the room aside. The first had blocked the large pillars extending from the floor to the ceiling. The entire building had an eerie violet glow to it, and the walls and the floor shimmered in light. Rivers' interest was drab by impressive fluorescent blues, details all along the walls and the edges. The early rivers resembled Noxian runes inscribed into a giant, gigantic broken sword. <coughs> it's a bar, is that? Alright. Recite the air quickly before resting. The habit, a habit she picked up while traveling alone. There were a few hooded figures conversing quietly on the other side of the room. On her right, a lone man stood silently, a large hat obscuring his face in the shadows of the pillars. Several attendants shuffled swiftly through the pathways, their footsteps ringing audibly across the hall. <coughs> Progress into the room slowly, unsure of where she should be heading. Her steps down the stairs managed to echo loudly, even though she was the only wearing padded boots, only adding to her knees. The hood figures paused and glanced over. She froze, pretty hostile. She tied her grip on her sword. <laughs> Alright. You think her way, you think her descent slowly and warily. She began to study the areas of the rooms, and her attention is still focused on the figures. As she kept looking, she didn't feel the need to yell across the hall. Stop! She thought to herself. Take a deep breath, just relax. You've been through a lot in the past hour. Your mind is a mess. With one first step, they turned back to each other and continued their conversation, leaving Riven in relief. She had enough of suspicion and doubt everywhere she went, one of the main reasons she considered coming here, and hoping the league might offer a uh, more positive change of pace. She was bomb she arrived at the bottom of the stairs and took another look around. She didn't notice that some of the details on the walls spelled out words an elegant text directions to her immediate right was apparently a library and after that effort in her Alright, I'm sorry. And her left the mess hall. Speaking of messes, she dated her dots a hand on her gut. She was starving. 
She hadn't had much money for food on her journey here, and she could use a full meal. Her goal in sight, she headed towards the arch archway that led to the, out to the, oh my god, why can't I do it? <clears throat> towards the archway that led out of the main hall. The side awaited her, however, stretched the ribbon completely from her hugger, and the mess hall were maybe a lot of creatures, mystical appearances. Some together in groups, others alone. Her champions of elite, she realized. Along with Summers, in their usual robes, there were a few impressive looking humans scattered about. But the ones that really stood out were the supernatural. A large humanoid tree sat alone in the window sill, bathing in the sunlight that leaked into the room, and playfully toying with a small sapling, trying to get his drink into his water dish. On the other side of the room, was a giant bull, whom she quickly, which she has to recognize as Alistar, a former gladiator from Noxus. She also heard that he might have a grudge against them, and made note to avoid him for now. As far as she knew, there wasn't any fighting allowed in this too, and she didn't plan on getting kicked out of it before she had a chance to swear a pros and cons. The sort of growled and Ribbon remember the reason she was here. Seeing towards the buffet, on the far east she passed a small group of ninjas. All whom who studied her curious curiously, she tried to ignore it. After studying the buffet for less than a few seconds, she quickly tried a plate of whatever was available. At this point, she didn't care. Whether it tasted good or bad, as long as it was edible. A vacant table nearby caught her attention, and she sat down at it. She wanted to be alone, and the room was sufficient space to accommodate her wish. Have to clear my throat. Um that's not just I do it on the um, camera. So they had waited her, however, the stranger ever completely from her way uh, I already did that. <coughs> Riffin began wolfing down her food. It was exceptional, especially compared to how she was used to eating. Almost unfairly delicious. Suddenly, they all hit her by once. To pass the long, seemingly endless journey. And uh, finally, Rue waking at her unexpected, uh, her unexpected destination, her eyes stood up as she thought about the hardship she had up to this point. And now, it was somehow all supposed to be fixed just by showing up here. She wondered why she even died of joining the League in the first place. She heard the noble goals and actions that were expected of the League of Legends champions. Here she was, without either. She didn't have the drive to battle. She once commanded. Simply a strange need to drift. And move on to the third destination with no clear end in sight. Just then she caught something in the corner of fire. She really wiped her with her tears on the spot. There was again on the other side of the room. An occasional strange glimmer in the sunlight occurred near one of the tables. She was staring at it, but it didn't happen again. She was about to brush off another oddity of the institute, but as she, she blinked, a young woman a, a young woman appeared at the table. A petty, fragile looking girl with beautiful golden hair that shone brightly in the light. She seemed captivated by the sun, a faint smile showing on her face. Her clothes were casual, but sparkled with elegance. All the same, Riffin couldn't help but stare in her wonder. Stare at her in wonder, why tonight? Okay. And was only awakened when the girl slowly turned her head and looked, looked back. Riffin quickly averted her eyes. But noticed that the girl's smile had turned somewhat of a mischievous grin. And just suddenly, as she appeared, she vanished. Riffin looked to the spot where she'd been, and around the room. She was already seen. Riffin turned back to her food, and only three of the girls sitting across from her. She only looked in her seat in surprise, causing her to bang her knees loudly against the table. Riffin grimaced from the pain. The girl sat there until finally breaking the silence. Hello, Nasian, she said simply, smirking, her tone was high and cheerful. Riffin immediately sh took a word of challenge. Four more. Not exceeded. She corrected. <coughs> Look, flowering. At least the term she would use whenever someone challenged her identity. Little shrug. A knock will always be a knock. And you're Ozzy. Just another blind machi. Allies. Riffin counter. You're a good girl. Well. You sure looked blind a few moments ago. Looking for me, didn't you? Oh, and they call us shinies nowadays. Where have you been? She added, almost an afterthought. The owner mouth respond, but stop. She had 
to keep her emotions in check. Why are you here? She asked instead. We're gonna pause for a moment. I gotta ask you the same question. I gotta ask you the same question. Came and heard solemn answer. Riven turned back to her plate and shuffled her feet around in the plate. Remind me of a lack of direction. This isn't what I meant. I know, but it is what I meant. The girl quick replied quickly, leaning on the table. Her voice back to normal, cheerful tone. Riven looked up and met the girl's blue eyes with a cool stare. She knew this was she knew she was being played with, and she didn't really want to play along. Please go away, she said flatly. In her spirits, that line usually sent people away, regardless of what they want. But the girl stood up and suddenly turned to leave. Aren't you going to leave my name? Why would I? Riven stopped. Short when she noticed a strange blue glow surrounding the girl. She squinted to see him clearly. Another trick, she thought cautiously. The girl smiled again and held out her hand. Riven looked at her own and noticed how the glow was surrounding her too. She reached towards her sword, but as soon as she grabbed it, she was in darkness. She was weightless in limbo. She was terrified. She said, what the hell is going on? What is this girl doing? I see what she came up. A man's voice spoke inside her head. Only then, she realized what was happening. She was being summoned. Just as soon as she got used to scheduling, she was back into her world. But she wasn't in the league. She was standing on the platform overlooking a large base structure. She took a step forward to get a better view. In front of her was a giant crystal surrounded by statues. Furthermore, she could see rows of towers standing in three different directions. This is on the roof, she realized. Correct, the voice came again. My name is Falnik. I am a summoner in charge of you for this match. Please me the favor of following my commands. Ruben frowned. She already wasn't a fan of this, or the summoner. Before she could get in, a few figures ran past her, a giant dog-like creature. Nazis, she remembered from seeing him in the broadcast, ran past her towards the left lane as Riven watched him leave, a shadow came over her. A light snow landed on her shoulder. As a great iceberg flew towards the lane, she watched it in its marble. It was bumped slowly by a little mummy who shuffled as he shuffled past. She didn't look up and kept going towards the center as well. <clears throat> so this leads to the right, the right lane, she figured. Just as she was about to get moving, she felt a tap on her shoulder, starting to see who it was. And there was the Mossian girl from before, saying casually like nothing had happened, only she was wearing a typical set of light Mossian armor and carrying a glowing baton. Something else, someone else might have been impressed by looking at it. But after seeing those fantastic creatures, Riven thought she looked quite normal. It's her own safety, huh? She smirked as she smiled, walking towards the right lane. Lucky you. When sm Riven simply looked at her, unamused. She couldn't figure out. This she couldn't figure this girl out. Her bubbly personality didn't match her frank remarks. You might want to check out the item shop before you go. The girl called out as she left. I guess I'll be seeing you soon. She turned around toward. She ran, twirling her baton in one hand. Riven watched her go with an unsettling feeling in her stomach. She was, oh my god, how long is the story? I just now realized I've been here for this long reading as well. Alright, <clears throat> this is all we, I, I don't want to see one long video. They each had their own individual symbol in front of them. They were arranged in a simple, organized manner. Pick up the door and the the voice in her head said, her hand was strangely guided towards a badge with some sort of smallish purplish blade. She stayed aside disturbing a feeling of being possessed and picked it up. She immediately felt a small aura of power surround her. It felt good. She stuck the badge in her small sword instinctively. The shop automatically completed the transaction and displayed her money. The balance is counter front. Zero. A good place for starting now. Open the like athlete. She gripped her sword tightly for a moment then she suddenly fell aside it. And nervous. She knew exactly what to expect out of this. And was eager to find out. Being the same thing as the Demosian didn't seem like much of a big deal after all. And if all else felt, she was just feeling that she always done. By herself, and herself alone. 
Riven started off towards the right lane. As she passed Nexus, a young woman's voice resounded through the area. Minions have spawned. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. We glanced at the back at the Jack Crystal to see a small animate dolls being formed with a small whip sound. She allowed herself to be distracted and watched the rocks. As soon as minions were able to walk, they started moving towards the lanes in a straight line. Everyone was familiar with this procedure, I believe, matches, but seeing it first was something else. She's never adapted at magic, and everything here was on an astounding, at, was at an astounding level. And that is simply the basis of magic. Someone's voice came back, or came again. Imagine what one could accomplish as a master of it. Remember, they need to imagine it. She's been in the area of Kalamanda, or what now was called, or what was now called the Crystal Scar. She's been the beginning of, she's in the beginning of what could have been the largest war in the history, and now is prematurely stopped by a League with ease. If a handful of summoners could halt time itself in that large area, she felt an easy uh, entire league could do if provoked. Means past Riven, which brought her back to business. She ran catch up. Her excitement returning. She passed the first turn in the lane and began the journey past what was called the jungle. She could appear in Drew and see some openings in the trees, mystical looking frog fog shrouded that was contained within. Riven is like fog. Y'all remind her of her past. She kept her distance from it. They with the minions. They walled along quickly to spider size and Riven need to stay at a light jog keep in order to keep up. <coughs> Finally she reached the outer turn of the lane where familiar void figure awaited. The Moscow girl uncrossed her arms and gave Batana another twirl. Glowing from the ends of it made peculiar 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 pattern in the dimly lit rift. Riven braced herself for another sarcastic remark from the girl, but instead she gave Riven a neutral look. Are you ready? Riven looked back, surprised, but didn't answer. She stood the area in front of her. The large expanse ahead. There's some long grass to the right and an opening to the river that divided a rift to the left of her. Straight ahead, there was the enemy tower. Riven nodded, but not in response to the girl's question. It was a habit. It was a habit she had after locating her objective. It was beginning her focus. Something she was known for in, in Noxus. Aces and warriors were in a race. Without fear, as I, all of them were gone. All that was left was her and her target. This was her true strength. This is where her true strength came from, and the reason she made it this far. She's not again. She's ready now. To me, it's had reached the middle of the lane and started fighting. In which angels were nowhere to be seen, which meant when bolted for a long grass, a purple flash appeared, and Riven dodged the projectile with a graceful jump. She did she did the movement into a second jump, branching her sword and landing precisely at the edge of the grass. It, it cut through the grass, but it didn't make contact. Riven didn't hesitate. The large leap forward, she brought down her sword. In front of her clang came the rewarding sound. Where even unless she hit, her eyes wide, a giant humanoid crocodile stood in front of, stood before her, holding a massive half moon shaped blade against hers. Where is Nasus? He snarled, his eyes burning with rage. He swung his blade out towards, forced Riven to jump back, but looked past Riven, down the river. With another growl, he took off towards it. Riven was about to give chase when she stopped, abruptly midway through the lane. Slowly, he turned back to face her. However, his face was not calm, the fury faded. From his behavior, he raised his blade. Riven knew that he was about to charge. He got a defensive stance, ready to counterattack, but she didn't need it. Now, a girl yelled, Riven, wait. A blade of surreal, shifting light came soaring across the line. It, it hit the crocodile precisely and wrapped it around like him like a cage. Riven looked over to see the monster girl swinging her baton in a sling, seeing a small burst of compacted light in the crocodile. Now a girl yelled. Riven acted immediately. She dashed out of the bushes and lashed at the out of the crocodile, who was busy trying to block the light balls with his blade. Riven's sword slashed through him with a blue flash. The crocodile roared, 
We're really wasting time. She followed with another quick slash. We're gonna turn this back swing. We're gonna move back to avoid it. However, he was barraged by more blasts of light and was forced to keep defending himself. Riven noticed the light would fade from the cage and knew that this was her last opportunity. She jumped over the she jumped for a majestic flip that brought it down heavily on the beast and slice it clean in another blue flash. They brought leaving the beast bisected and frozen. <coughs> Instead of apparent agony, where Nathan has been slain, the other boy declared, Riven took a deep breath and watched her out named Renekton was surrounded by a, a, the blue light and dissolved away. That was a little eerie, Riven realized. She never made attention to it. In, in, in Triaces of Lee, I don't know how it worked. And she would need to start now. Look at the moss scene who smirked. Really? She said. Yeah, that'll be for me instead of rushing in like that. Lucky the summoner lost control of Renekton for a moment there. Lost control? I'm gonna repeat it. She only realized what had happened. Renekton had rushed away. He was doing so of his own will. The summoner had to stop him, which created the opening. And she almost felt cheated for a fair, a fair battle. But to be honest, I couldn't believe it happened the way it did. Even her a little ro even her a low risk initiation to battles in League of Legends. But Riven had noticed something felt off from the beginning. You waited for me to go in so you could rescue me, didn't you? She questioned the girl. I don't know what you're talking about. The girl replied with a carefree shrug. shrug. I denied mean, her for a moment more. She was lost for words. She was a little irritated. But she was still indebted to this girl somehow. Thank you for assistance, she forced herself to say. The Royal Eagle, and she said playfully, taking a step closer to Riven. Her face was just a, favorite, a foot for a foot or two for Riven's. Riven's leaning back. Riven leaned back. She was just she wasn't used to being this close to other people. But still, she knows the other girls. The other girl's eyes were sparkling, even in this dim, fog infested place. She said she had the fleeting thought. They were beautiful and comforting. Riven looked away with a slight blush. She put that dot away, and she had gotten a hint. And can I ask you your name? The girl swung her baton, seeing a beam of light past Riven quicker than she read. With a glance, Riven saw it hit a minion that met, had managed to get behind her. That minion toppled over and stopped moving, and probably dissolved with the blue light, like just like Renekton. The girl brushed by catching the wrong girl. I almost saw a crown car of Demacia, she said as she strolled ahead. But most people just call me Lux. Lux, ah, Riven started. Lux, girl, I rubbed it. Lux. Then, more Riven continued. She just, what is your deal? Lux looked shocked for a second and then burst out laughing. Riven frowned and crossed her arms, sighing. This girl Lux definitely has. definitely an not ball. However, Riven's attention turned abruptly. They far bushes out of the lane. A small purple glimmer soon turned into a large magical blade and flew across the lane straight towards Lux. Watch it, she yelled as she jumped in front of Lux. The bolt hit her directly with force of an arrow. Riven flinched and glanced down and inspected the roll. But instead, she only saw a ground stretch from the bubbling black blue. Goo. But gave away it gave off a seeing heat. A searing heat. And Riven could feel it burning Tree aura surrounded by her body. She had to move, but the bolt had snared her in place. She was on the pang when something large flew past from her behind. She felt like she felt like she felt the wind from it as it passed. Suddenly, the heat wasn't intense. She looked up to see what had passed her just in time to duck it came, as it came flying by. The body magic wore off, and Riven dashed <coughs> out of the goo. To escape any more danger, she lay on the ground, gasping in the cool air. She looked at, up at Lux walking close to her, thought back at it in the hand. Her smile was gone, and her gaze was held on the bushes until she was sure nothing, there was no more regret. Finally, she looked at her back to River. Sometimes, it's a, a little hard to control, Lux smiled meekly. Thanks for saving me. Likewise, Lux said, holding her hand out, Riven dressed. And allow Lux to help her up 
We're gonna brush yourself and pick up a sword. What was that? We're gonna. Lux said with distaste. Riven didn't inquire further. She heard of my god back in Nexus, an immoral, highly skilled in dark magic, whose sole goal was to destroy her sister, Kale. Needlessly to say, she had. She had fit in well at Nexus, had she chosen to. We kept an eye on the bushes, but didn't see more movement. Looks like going back to the attacking minions, Riven watched as Lux specifically targeted the ones with which had taken damage more. Taking more damage, usually resulting in the finishing blow. Lux noticed Riven's gaze as well. Venus is increasing your goal, but you'll need to balance between gaining goal and pushing out away from our, your tower. <coughs> Riven nodded. She's beginning to get a better idea how to strategize an unconventional battle. She looked up towards the enemy purple minions and noticed one taking a bean from one of her blue ones. She went over and gave it a light swat of her sword. It toppled over it and lay on the ground for a moment before it sent away with familiar blue light. Riven looked towards the enemy tower. It was partially shot in fog, but the next wave of minions was coming into view. With another larger lumbering can minion, and behind that, an even larger figure. But Riven recognized the shape of weapon carrot. Right? And it was back already? The chill ran out her spine. She wasn't sure if it was just the atmosphere came to her or. The idea of facing him and she just killed either way, it simply reminded her of her past. How long it had been since she forced to relieve all that horrid memory? Less than an hour? She shuddered in an attempt to get rid of the chilling feeling. It worked a little. Wow, this is a lot of reading. This is a lot of reading. <laughs> oh my god, wow, how long has this been? I don't even know. <sighs> okay, she took a deep breath and tried to get back to in the focus. Morgan I mean, wait. Morgan was still concealed in the bush, and everything was drawing Stanley closer. She began analyzing the better routes relative to attack the crowd of minions. Hey, Lux. Called. Hey, Lux called. Breaking Riven's conversation. Concentration. She sighed and gave a girl a slightly irritated look. Riven wasn't used to having distraction in the battle. What? She replied, letting out a bit of noise and seep into her voice. The magical blade Morgan uses was the unfazed. It can only affect the first target it hits. You can fairly use as a minion, use a minion as a shield. With a grimace. Now she saw the real purpose of minions. They were simply in the front line. Why didn't she see it before? As she's surprised her, let's cut. The look of Riven's face and giggle. They're only minions. Riven stood at Lux's point. They were indeed lifeless dolls, but the idea still irked her. That was where it all began. When it came to the actual war, to the first line, they know there is a friendly fire. But other things, there's other things like, they're not aliens. They don't believe in death anyway. <coughs> I was like worried if this game of League had been created to end up for any watching evidence into this dangerous philosophy of superiority complexes and designating of death. Should I put the dot behind her and once again get back to the fire that anyone was keeping distance back and forth across the lane? There's so often the attempt to attack a man, but Lux would make sure he paid for it by shooting a ball of light his way. Or now was still nowhere to be seen. The scene Riven's team was in control of the lane. Fire hurt. All your outlook of the minions. Riven made sure to keep one of those between her and the bushes. She and I have agreed with the philosophy, but it would wouldn't be the first time she put her survival for for her morals. I believe I've let you run around on your on your own for long enough, Ken Sutter so once again. Riven had never really forgotten about him. It's my turn now. She didn't understand what he meant by this. She didn't get a chance to think about it. With a loud rustle and the wolf like creature burst into the river bushes to her left and pounced on her. Warwick Dot rushed through her mind in the instant she was hit. She got her sword and was knocked to the ground. Look at these decks slashing at her with vicious ferocity. She started to get him off, but it's futile. She reached around looking for a sword, her hand 
fell through the blade, she quickly snatched it and swung it as at the wolf with as much rage as she could muster. The, the hilt hit him sharply in the jaw, causing him to flinch. Rufin brought her legs, brought up her legs and kicked him off. She, she quickly did a back roll and ended up on her feet again, but something was off. She knew she'd been taken, she'd taken some serious damage, but this was something different. Her wrist seemed to slow. She learned the wolf had done something to her. Her vision was getting a little bit blurry, and everything had a bluish tint to it. Wolf regained his composure and was charging again. Along Warwick, Riv, or Renekton, Riven tried to get the defensive stance, but her body wouldn't respond at all. All she could do was watch as the enemy closed the gap for the second time. Riven felt genuinely helpless. A play of light flew past her and hit the wolf, ricocheted onto Renekton, and they were staring both into place. The moment from earlier appeared, followed by a giant beam of light from behind. Morgana flew, finally stepped out from the bushes and began attacking. While fighting her own battle, Riven couldn't keep track of all the chaos. She tried to look around, but couldn't move her head slowly. Her arm rose. It was Riven's doing, but she was decided by what she was seeing to notice. In her hand, her sword was in full restore mode form. She could, if she could have gas, she would have. Suddenly, her body was moving again, but Riven was in control. She watched as she leaped in the battle, her sword glowing bright green with each swing. As if enjoying the mayhem, it was relieving and its forming glory, former glory. The wolf went down, he had received so much focus, fire that he fell into the ground before Lux's before he gets straight escape Lux's trap. Right as the snare had worn off, he made he made the dash at He made a dash at Riven. He was stopped by her short key blast and the explosive ability that she created using the sword power of Noxian runes and striding her sword, an orb of light flew off at him, he spoiled violently, knocking him on the ground when we kept his attention on him. Morgana saw the tides turning and moved to escape, runs by attempting to cut her off with a quick dash. She caught up to Morgana, managed to strike her twice, but just as she was about to let the decisive dirt blow, Morgana instantly vanished and reappeared a short distance away. Well, under the cover of the tower, Mister, was Riven's thoughts. Not yet, she came. Not yet, came in Summer's reply. Riven's body was pulled into the tower's range, and Archer, though, at the A place, glow ominously. Wait, Riven thought, I can't. The tower fired a ball of magic towards her. Riven dashed forward. The bullet hit her the ground beside her. The shockwave was enough to cause her to stumble a little bit. Stop, Riven cried out in her head, the scene playing out. For her heart was too careless. I will make it. Shove and watch. The fear building up in Riven's mind was uh, at an unbearable level. Against she was being controlled against her will, and not only was she undoing it, she was forcing to watch, forced to watch it. I'm un unblinking. That would fire another shot. Those so probably assured it. I'm going to die. The dot ran through Riven's head. But instead of taking the bus tower, some of her made Riven draw towards the. Jump forward as the magic hit the exploded, capulling her head. Morgana looked back to see Riven flying at her with rising speed. Before she could even react, she was given a, a sharp slash across her side. Riven landed in front of Morgana. Her blade held back, ready to swing again. It glowed furiously. It was fully charged. During this ability of a swift, determined swing, Riven let loose the magic her sword had built up. It sent out a torrent of, of piercing magical enhanced wind <coughs> in front of her, striking Morgana ruthlessly. Morgana let out a cry of pain and slumped over, but just as she was on a fall, she fired a purple blade towards Riven. Move! Riven died desperately, but something was different again. The vision wasn't blurred anymore. She couldn't feel the way of her blade. She back in control of her body, but it was far too late. The magic struck her. It snared, it snared her in place. She looked to Morgana, who cackled darkly before falling around. She looked at the tower, and was another gun charging his next shot, I'm going to die. The fear watched over her and knew this was all too foreign to her. This place, these people, these feelings. She just could keep up. Her mind was being overwhelmed. The turn fired. 
The bright purple shot grew in size, Raven helplessly watched, wide eye as it closed in distance. It took up her whole vision, it was so bright. Riven! A voice called out, but then it was dark. And that was La Reading. Wow, my eyes hurt from staring at the screen. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay, so, um, that is Guiding Light, guys. Link in the description to the story if you want to read it yourself. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy reading these stories. I just don't like not to read them for so long that I start messing up words because I, I think I was fine. To be honest though, I just got done recording a game for like an hour or so, which I do a lot of reading, so. You know, such is life. Oh, but if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, comment, as always, subscribe to your companion, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.